John Beltran, Dave Urich back from Keensburg. We head to the second quarter, and the Bee Diggers trail by a score of 20-7. to seven. Second down and 18 for Weld Central at their own 19-yard line. They've scored on their two possessions. They also have a 54-yard interception return by Saris, who rolls to his right, pressure coming back side. Flag is down, throws along the sideline, pass is going to be incomplete. It was caught, but out of bounds at the 38-yard line by Brandon Hoff. Well, that's got to go against Weld Central. Holding again against the Rebels. Well, we're glad that they're self-destructing down here. The ball was thrown just a little bit wide. I'll tell you what, Hoff would have had a first down if there was no hold and, and uh, if his feet would have been inbound. Sears made that throw look easy. The ball just drifted a little bit over into the Weld Central, Central bench. B Diggers declined the penalty. Big play here with 11.52 to go, just eight seconds into the second quarter because the B Digger defense has not had a stop yet. Third and 18 for Weld Central at their own 19-yard line. With the Rebels up 20-7. to seven. Baxter and I, receivers to the left and right. Play action. Sears holding the ball on his left hip. Now rolling over to the right. A flag is down again. He's getting pressured. Rolls to the sideline. He's not going to bounce. And that's going to be a loss. It'll be a sack. Kyle Hefker was back there along with Shea Hansen. Inside the 10. Close to the 8. It'll be a loss of around 11. I think the Rebels wanted a late hit, but I don't, I don't think that was a late hit. It's towards nah. the sideline. They're saying Sirius was running out of bounds anyway, and he might have been. He was standing, you know, like right on the line when he when he got hit. The deal was the digger didn't come up and just push him out of bounds. He put a shoulder pad on him. Well, it's a loss of 11. So fourth down and 29 to go for Weld Central at their own eight-yard line. Great opportunity for the bead diggers to capitalize. Remember that Weld Central led Eaton last week 14-12 to at halftime before Eaton got going and won 34-20. to Brandon Hoff to punt. The officials are having a hard time figuring out where they need to put the football. Well, why is it at the 19? I don't understand that. The ball was placed at the 80, went out of bounds. The penalty was against the Rebels. I I don't understand what's happening here. I'm not sure either because we didn't take the penalty. Yeah, but if they don't take the penalty, then you, it, it's where the ball game. went out of bounds. I mean, do these guys know how to officiate? You know, it, the the sack, if you want to call it that, because it's registered as a sack, was at the eight-yard line. And when you decline a penalty, it's where the play ended. Yeah, you don't put the ball back at the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, the result of the play is a huge loss. And I, how do all these officials get confused about a basic play? What I'd like to know is how do they know they got the ball back exactly where he went out of bounds? Well, it's because there's no marker there. Right. Well, now they have it at the seven. So the beat diggers gained a yard in their favor. They moved the down box three times for that one play, and not one time did they ever have have to, you know, put any hooks on any chains or anything like that to prove where the ball is. Fourth and thirty. Perfect snap to Brandon Hoff. He gets it off an end-over-end punt. Joe Rosenbrock is going to field it at the 47, run to his right, and he's going to break a tackle, try to hit the sideline. There's a flag down at the 50, up to the 40-yard line, down to the 30, runs over a rebel. That's Travis Sievers who makes the tackle along the far sideline at the 28, but there are multiple flags on the field. Yeah, both of them are right here in front of the Weld Central bench, so you can believe that the coaches for Weld Central, they saw the... Uh, the penalty happened. This is going to be called against the Diggers. The Bay Diggers will still have some good field position, but it would have been great field position blocking the back against Brush. And that's too bad because that football could be now inside their own, well, on their own side of the field. Let's put it that way. The bad thing is, you know, Rosenbrock changed directions. So... You know that that took the advantage away from the so, from the beat digger blockers. But the problem was the block happened in a position where the where it wasn't going to have any impact on the play because Rosenbrock was running clear over to the beat digger bench. It'll still be at the 48 yard line of Weld Central. Committed to serving those in production, Ag Premier Farm Credit is the gold standard in ag lending. First and ten for the beat diggers of the Rebels, 48 trailing 20 to seven. 33 seconds into the second quarter. I'm John Beltran with Dave Urich from Kingsburg. 
Three in the backfield for Brush. Garcia to hand it off on the right side. There's a big hole across the 45 to the 40. And that is Connor Weiser. A gain of eight yards on the play before he's upended by Garrett Page. Second down and two, and now the Bee Diggers are playing their style of football. Yeah, after running right there over the right side that time, so another nice hole and a, and a good run. Well, Central's got six guys up on the line of scrimmage, no free safety. The corners have to play pretty tight because we don't have any wide receivers. Second and two for the Weld Central 40. Garcia with a gift to the deep back and a gain of a couple there for Weiser as he slammed into Brandon Hoff. Very close to the first down. If he doesn't have it, which he does not, it's going to be, from this vantage point, he's going to be less than a yard from that first down. Marker has to get to about the 37-and-a-half yard line. They're at the 38 now. I'm surprised the Whitecaps even consider measuring it. Yeah, it's clearly third down and less than a yard, just shy of that 38-yard line. About half a yard to go for the beat diggers. Weiser tried to leave his feet and kind of high-step over one of the, the well, central defenders. But as soon as he um, got his feet up off the ground, Hoff just delivered a blow kind of right to his midsection. Nice tackle there. Weiser's had the majority of the carries in this game. Third and less than a yard from the 38. Handoff first down right up the middle, storming across the 35 to the 33 is Connor Weiser. Picking up five, Garrett Page made the tackle. Yep, Weiser's carried the ball nine times for Brush. Um, Garcia's thrown it four times, and then there's been three other runs. So the bulk of the play, like you said, is right to Connor. And at some point they'll go somewhere else just to give him a little bit of a breather. And now, I believe that's Skyler Seawald now in the backfield. First and ten, and it is. Just inside the Weld Central 33, Seawald left side. Tries to spin out of a tackle, and he does to the 26-yard line. Stumbled out of that tackle, I should say. Picking up seven yards. Page had the penetration. But again, a big gain for the beat diggers. Second down and three after the pickup of seven for Seawald. Seawald used his hands to push one of the Weld Central kids away, and then he just jerked his foot out of the other one's hands and... Well, I'll tell you what, he was just a little bit of balance away from breaking a big one. This game is moving along rather slowly. Nine and a half to go second quarter. Weld Central leads 20-7. to seven. They were up 20 to nothing. Beat Diggers are on the move again. Second and three from the 26. Garcia to hand it off right side to Seawald. First down or close to it. Well, I thought he had it at the 23, but he was driven back at the 24 by Brandon Hoff and Eli Hollister. And he's not going to make it. It'll be a gain of two, but third down and a yard to go for the beat diggers. Well, you like those odds. Uh, Seawald was running. He was kind of standing straight up and down when he when he took that hit. And one of the Weld Central kids was laying down behind him and the, the Rebels pushed him over the top of him. Connor Weiser back into the game. Third and one for the beat diggers at the Rebels 24. Three remain in the backfield. There's the give right up the middle. First down and that is Connor Weiser as he's clipped up by Brandon Hoff. Weiser goes down at the 15, but it's a gain of nine for Connor Weiser. And the Bay Diggers have run six plays on the drive all on the ground. That play was just really fast. You know, once Weiser got the ball, he, he shot through there like he was a rock out of a slingshot. Your full service florist with a whole lot more is the Flower Peddler. Come in and see what's in store at 322 Main Street in downtown Fort Morgan, the Flower Peddler. First and ten for the Bay Diggers at the Rebels' 15-yard line. Rosenbrock is in motion to the right. Garcia is going to roll that way. Does he want to throw? He'll take off with the football, cuts it back towards the middle. He's inside the 10-yard line to perhaps the nine, maybe the eight. They'll give him six yards before he was wrapped up. Second down and four. There's a rare carry in this game for Eric Garcia, but that keeps the Weld Central defense honest. You bet. They have to respect his speed to the outside. Because once he gets out in the open, he can run away from anybody. If he gets anybody, you know, one-on-one, he's he's got a lot of lateral movement that allows him to shake people off. Second down and four to go for the Weld Central nine. In the backfield are Rosenbrock, Weiser, and Morrow. In motion to the left is Tanner Morrow. Garcia on the give to Weiser. Left side cuts it back towards the middle, and he drives to the five. He'll pick up four. 
Eli Hollister made the tackle right at the stick. They're going to say third down, but that's going to be third down and what, about a couple of inches? That might be better than having a first down. Yeah, they. this is one of those things where you got to expect Will Tensel to stack that line up there and a good chance for Brush to pitch the ball to the outside or maybe even try to throw it in the end zone since they don't have any free safeties back there. Third down and inches to go from the five-yard line of Weld Central. Garcia hands it off on the left side, and Weiser stumbled. He was hit at the line of scrimmage by Page. Did he stumble enough to get to the four? It looked like he got some forward movement. I mean, if he got a first down out of that, out of that which I think he did, that was a great play, and that is a first down for the beat diggers. I mean, that wasn't a whole gain of one, but Weiser did a great job maintaining some sort of balance. Yeah, again, he was trying to go over the top of the defender. That time, Walt Central was able to reach up there and trip him up, but, you know, Weiser alertly fell forward, used his hands to stretch out and pick up that extra couple inches. First and ten. Or the bead, first and goal for the bead diggers, and there's the handoff right side. Weiser drives towards the end zone, and he is in. It's a touchdown for the bead diggers. Connor Weiser scores from four yards out his second score of the game, and the bead diggers are to within seven. It's twenty to thirteen. Eighty-four yards now for Weiser. He can. He's running all over the top of the the rebels. Off tackle, he runs to the right, runs to the left. It doesn't matter. He's just tearing this well central defense up. Five minute and three second drive for Brush. And they only covered 48 yards. That tells you that they went down the field methodically, but that's the way the beat diggers do it. Jesus Cardenas to attempt the extra point off the hold of Garcia. It's down. That kick is up. And Mr. Automatic is good. 6.34 to go second quarter. Well, Central 20. Brush 14 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. <laughs> 